Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about spousal RRSPs and how they become obsolete. So with income splitting and other um, CRA rules that have come out in the last number of years, do spousal RRSPs still make sense to have? And if they do, when are those situations? So we'll go through that in this video. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button below. It costs nothing. It takes you one second and we really do appreciate it. And if these videos are helping you out, hit the thumbs up. Again, it really does help get our videos out to more people. It hits the YouTube algorithm and we really do appreciate it. So let's jump into the content. So let's first cover off how a spousal RSP works. So a spousal RSP is much like a regular RSP in that it's, it's kind of a bucket or an umbrella where you can have investments, okay? So a spousal RSP is not the investment itself. It is the, the account or the tool or the umbrella or the bucket, however you wanna call it, where the investment lies. So an RSP, much like a spousal RSP in that matter. So a spousal RSP has two parties to it. It has the owner of the account and the contributor to the account, okay? So let's take a husband and a wife. Let's say the wife is working, you know, making good money and the husband, you know, has low income or no income, okay? And the wife decides to set up an account and put money into a spousal RSP account for the husband, okay? She would be the contributor. He's the owner of the account. So he is actually the one that sets up the account on the paperwork, lists his spouse or, or uh, wife in this situation as the, as the contributor, okay? So the wife, higher income earner, is the contributor. He's the owner. Now, where does the RSP contribution room come in? The contributor needs to have the contribution room, not the owner of the account, okay? So in this case, the wife needs to have contribution room in order to make contributions to her husband's spousal RSP, okay? So again, her contribution, her money contribution goes into his RSP account, her spousal RSP account. He owns the account. It's her contribution room and her tax break. So if she puts $10,000 into his spousal RSP, it eats up her contribution room and it also gives her the tax deduction, okay? So that's kind of the gist of a spousal RSP. Many of you get caught up on, okay, whose contribution room and who gets the tax break. So that's how it works. So hopefully that kind of simplifies it and now we can kind of move on to the benefits and drawbacks of a spousal RSP. So there's two key benefits that I wanna go through with the Spouse RSP. And number one is income splitting, okay? So um, as a lot of you know, when you hit 65, you can convert your RSP to a RIF, start drawing out of a RIF, and if you're past 65, you can income split that, okay? So that's a huge benefit. Now, a Spouse RSP, whether you have an RSP or Spouse RSP, if you can split the income anyways, then there's really no point of having a Spouse RSP. So when does a spousal RSP come into, you have, you have a benefit for income splitting? It's before age 65. So if you want to like kind of look at income splitting and, and you know building out your RSPs, again, let's say you have one spouse that is a high income earner and another spouse has, you know, lower zero income. You know, st the standard way is just, you know, shove money into the RSP of the higher income earner. But when you hit retirement, you're going to have one RSP that says, you know, a million dollars, and then the other spouse has zero. So the spousal RSP over time, you could even out your contributions and have 500,000, 500,000. So it evens out the accounts, which when you pull it out, evens out the tax bill. But again, if you only start pulling out of your RSPs 65 or on, you know, if you convert it to a RIF first, any money you pull out, you get income split. So it really does the same thing. So with income splitting, which was put into place, I believe it was back in 2007, it's kind of negated the benefit of the spousal RSP. But what happens before 65? So if you plan to retire with a lot of RSPs before 65 and look at income splitting, you can't income split RSP or RIF income before 65. So you'd have to utilize a spousal RSP. So that's where a spousal RSP will come into play and be beneficial for you, okay? So that same client or situation where it's a million dollars RSP, zero spells RSP, if they retired at 55 and started pulling out of an RSP, all of that money is taxed in the, in the husband or the wife, whoever put the money in in the first place, into their hands. They can't split that. Whereas if they had put the 500,000 and 500,000 into a spousal, then that could have been split prior to 65. So we don't see it a lot. Most people, you know, delay and have other strategies. But if you're planning to have, you know, a large RSP and pull out before 65, 
consider using a spousal, spousal RSP to be able to split that income in the tax bill you know, from 50, 55, any, any time before 65, there would be a benefit for income splitting using a spousal RSP. The second, and in my opinion, the biggest benefit of a spousal RSP, and what, what, kind of when we use it most for our clients of any age, you can be in your 20s, you can be in your 50s, 60s, doesn't matter, is when you have a high income earner and a zero to low income earner, okay? So I'm gonna use the example of Sally and Tom, okay? So Sally is making $100,000 a year as a professional, and Tom is at home with the kids. So Tom has zero income. Now. What Sally could do is put, let's say she contributes $15,000 every year to an RSP. But instead of using her RSP, she puts one into a spousal RSP for Tom. So Tom opens up a spousal RSP account and Sally makes a contribution. So let's say she makes a $15,000 contribution for four years in a row. So she builds it up to $60,000. I'm not gonna take into consideration growth and all that. So let's just say in four years from now, the spousal RSP has $60,000 in it. Sally has got the tax breaks along the year, so she's saved a bunch of money in taxes, and the account is sitting in Tom's hands, okay? Now, she turns off that tap. So after four years, she she's done contributions, and she no longer makes contributions to the spousal RSP. If Tom was to wait three calendar years until he starts pulling money out of there, there's no income attribution. So that means that the, the income that he pulls out or the money that he pulls out of the spousal RSP will be taxed in his hands. If he pulls any out in the first three years, it would be taxed back to Sally's hands, okay? So that's one thing to be aware of, the income attribution. You cannot uh, touch money, or if you pull money out of a spousal RSP in the first three years, that income is attributed back to the original contributor, okay? So in this scenario, we wanna put $15,000 in for four years in a row, build that up to 60,000, and then not touch it for three years. Let it just grow, okay? After those three years, Tom could pull the money out. Let's assume he pulls 20,000 out for the next three years, okay? He's still at home with the kids raising them. He could have that $20,000 of income, and as you know, there's pretty much zero income, or zero taxes on 20,000 of income. So very beneficial. So Sally had a huge tax break putting $15,000 in every year for four years. They left it. Maybe after four years, Sally put money into her own RSP. And now Tom has this bucket of $60,000. He's gonna pull out $20,000 every year after he's waited that three years, okay? We gotta make sure there's no income attribution. So Tom pulls up $20,000 every year for three years, and it's essentially tax-free. So that's a way to get a tax break on the contribution, wait a little bit, and then pull money out tax-free. Now, they could take that money and recontribute it into RSP, do whatever they want with. But it is a great strategy to get a tax break now for the high income earner, leave it for a few years, and be able to pull it out down the road in a low, you know, a lower or even a zero tax bracket. So that's a great strategy. We've used it for many clients, and it's worked great. It's, it's a great way to kind of utilize the spousal RSP. And in my opinion, this is the greatest tool with the spousal RSP. Again, not everyone fits into kind of this category to be able to do this strategy. But if you find yourself of, okay, well, we have a few years or maybe you have a large chunk of money and this is most common, a client will come to us and say, look, we have, you know, fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 and we have the contribution room. You know, one of the spouses or common law partners has zero to little income. So we'll dump the money in, we'll wait the three years, and then we'll pull a lot of that money out over, you know, usually two or three years, depending on how much money it is. So again, it's a great strategy with the spousal RSP. In my opinion, it's the greatest way to use a spousal RSP. So is a spousal RSP, you know, is it relevant anymore? I would say it is in certain situations. And again, this isn't for everyone, but if you fall into kind of this, this structure, this category, it's a great tax planning tool to use and can put tens of thousands of dollars back in your pocket just through allocation, okay? You're not, you're not skirting rules, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just the way you've invested money, you've waited, you've pulled it out. So it's a great strategy to use and a great way, again, to use your spousal RSP. So again, just to recap here, there's kind of, with the spousal RSP, there's two main parties to it. There's the contributor, which is usually the higher income earner and the person that's putting money into the account. They're the ones that need to have the contribution room, okay? So they need to have contribution room, they get the tax break, they're putting the money in. 
Then there's the owner of the account. This is usually the lower income earner. This is the person that actually owns the account. And again, once there's been no more deposits put in, if they wait three calendar years and pull money out, the income will be uh, taxed in their hands. If they pull it out before the three year mark, it'll be attributed back to the contributor. So again, there's two parties to this. So hopefully this cleared up spousal RSPs, if they're obsolete, if they could work for you. Again, you might be watching this saying, yeah, we fit into this. Like, you know, one of us is staying at home with the kids or has no income or maybe retired early. And we've done this with a couple where, you know, the wife retired early, has no income. So we've, we've done this later on in life. So there's no kind of age bracket that this falls into. So uh, if you find yourself in this category and need some planning, you know, reach out to our office. We're happy to help out meet with your financial planner, investment advisor, whoever you talk to about this stuff. But again, it's a great strategy to put more money back in your pocket without really needing to outlay more money up front. So it's just a bit of a planning tool that again, can put tens of thousands of dollars back in your pocket. And that's what we're here for. We're trying to give you tips and tricks to just help little planning strategies that can really make a long-term impact for you in your retirement. So hope you enjoyed the video today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.